Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for uh, being here. <clears throat> My main research topic is the digital transformation of cultural institutions, especially in the public sector, and I'm particularly interested in using data analytics to better improve the, like, the management in the cultural sector um, and cultural management in special. Today, I will be presenting a part of my PhD thesis, which is still in a work in progress. And um, this part, it's an analysis of a magazine that I will be presenting in, in, in a second, okay? Called the Boletín Cultural y Bibliográfico. Or I will be, from now on, just calling it the uh, BCB, okay? BCB, to make it way easier. Um, this, um, in my thesis, uh, the focus of my work is a specific institution, which is the Central Bank of Colombia, which is particular by, because it uses the 10% of the profit it generates by all of the operations it conducts in the open market to finance uh, then, in turn, cultural programs that it offers. So, for example, that includes a huge uh, network, uh, network of libraries with over 32 different locations, also more than five museums, a collection of uh, archaeological gold, just to name some of the flagship projects of this, of this institution. Mm. Oh, okay. Okay, so to give you some context on why I'm working with this topic, uh, I would like to tell you that there has been in recent years an increased interest in institutions in Latin America to better reflect and also better serve the diverse communities that these countries are. And I see in special uh, two, two main reasons for supporting uh, diversity. The first one, which I believe it's most commonly used, uh, is that it's a matter of fairness especially when you have societies that have been marked by such a large extent by these disparities in terms especially of gender, social class, ethnicity, to name, to name some of the most promising, uh, some of the most uh, marked gaps that we have that we need to address. And in combination to those, uh, to that question of fairness, of better representing the societies that we are, there's also a more utilitarian value, and it's just as these institutions have in its core value to promote a, a spark curiosity, to an, a, expand cultural horizons, also the type of, a, the more richer, the type of books that, it's, that are being presented, that are being included into what is considered culture, the more diverse artistic forms and representations and uh, literary genres that are being covered, I also believe there's a point to be made that it's part of the mission of these institutions. So uh, those, those arguments for me are equally important in, in, in this research. Um, based on these considerations in my work, I focus on curational diversity, understood as the level of difference in terms not only of the actors that participate in this network, in this case I will be talking about uh, the reviewers of a magazine and also about the authors of the books being reviewed. So of course the people that are participating directly and that are going to be appearing in this network are really important to, to know their identities and how to what extent they differ from one another. And in, in addition to this, I'm also interested in this network on the cultural objects that, that are also going to be appearing. So the books being reviewed, and I also consider cultural objects that are, I can have the data, the, the, the reviews themselves. Uh, lastly, as this is a network, I will be also analyzing, or that's one of the aims of this project, to be analyzing the degree of diversity in terms of the connections that build this network between who is reviewing by, uh, what sort of books by what sort of authors and so on and so forth. So while equity, the uh, inclusion and diversity research uh, tends, tends to use a lot of surveys to characterize participants. So to ask them how do they define in terms of this or the, those other groups, so that gives a lot of room for many different options. In my case, uh, and it's not feasible for me to contact most of these participants. In some cases, there are people who may not even be still alive. So working with this historical data that I will be using, my approach was rather to see what could I find about this network just using the archive that is available. Mm, so that's one of the main constraints of this work, and that's why it's more like a digital humanities work than a standard diversity and inclusion research. Okay. Mm. <clears throat> oh, sorry. 
So um, th these are some of the uh, magazines of the, the latest, uh, well, the, the, the one that you're seeing at the left, it's one of the latest issues, and the one that you're seeing to the right of you, sorry, uh, this one, <laughs> in case I'm not being clear, it's uh, way, way older than that. So um, in, in this specific study that I will be presenting, it's a study on the curational diversity of Boletín Cultural and Bibliográfico, which is a cultural magazine that has been published periodically since 1958. So it's been going for a, for a long time, and that's also ideal for these sort of longitudinal studies. Um, Mm, I have already told you a little bit about this Office of Cultural Affairs of the Central Bank of Colombia. So uh, it's, they do an amazing work in terms of the sort of uh, exhibitions that they organize. And especially in, the late, in some of their latest work, they have been really emphasizing uh, issues of diversity, such as the, participating or the participation of indigenous communities in the latest uh, political constitution of the country as well as, for example, the role play that women play in the independence of the country. So uh, that made me think, and that I had the expectation to find out uh, that that sort of curatorial decisions were going to be reflected on the data that I collected. I had that original expectations to see uh, the level of diversity across these different levels being increasing over time. At least that was what I was thinking I was going to get. And lastly, uh, something that really ties to the motivation of why to analyze curatorial diversity in this specific network is that the bank itself uh, recently included uh, diversity among its pillar values. So that's why it's especially important to see if that really aligns with what they're doing or not. <clears throat> uh, uh, okay, so... I became really interested in the evolution of curatorial diversity in this magazine when I realized that during the, 20, the first 20 years of the magazine, most of the reviews were published by just by three men who had very similar profiles or from the same city or from a very elitist sort of education. And then in, in the 80s, there started like a process in which the pool of reviewers started to expand and to include more, more, more women. Uh, at least that was the impression that I have from a qualitative uh, understanding of the text and of the magazine in itself. And so uh, uh, the main question that I had was, well, the, the different uh, levels of diversity that existed in this network, would they be stable over time or perhaps would they be changes? Uh, I believe perhaps one, one of the hypotheses, just thinking out loud, was that first I was going to be seeing a lot of changes in terms of the pool of reviewers, and that only with time would they perhaps that start to correlate with also higher diversity in the sort of topics that were being included, to, to give some examples. Mm. So for, for the methodology that I use, I start by generating a network scheme of, uh, of the cultural network that I'm analyzing. In this case, it was identifying that the main actors are, or at least based on the information that I can obtain from the magazine, are who, who are the authors of the books being reviewed, who were the reviewers themselves, also the sort of cultural objects that are involved or that are at the center of these cultural networks are the books reviewed and the reviews, so there's nothing special there. And then I have an important decision in this research was uh, establishing the independent variable. And in this case, it was time because I, what was really fascinating, fascinating for me was to see where the expectation that I had to see like the modernization of the cultural programs being reflected in the data. Uh, that, that's one of the reasons why I decided to work usual, using time to see how, if, if there was going to be any change over time. Um, and uh, right now, I'm finishing mining all of the data. Uh, I will be able to show you a lot of preliminary results in a moment. And the next stage that will follow, of course, will be more like a more in-depth statistical analysis, which I'm still uh, looking uh, exactly which, which way to go on it. Uh, in the data set that I will be using, there are uh, over 3,000 uh, reviews. Unfortunately, uh, I discovered there was a problem with the reviews from before 1983, uh, 1984, and, and, and going backwards, because uh, what happened when, it, when this archive was digitized, 
is that a lot of the reviews, if they were authored by more than one, if they were authored by just one person, they were just like bunched together. And there was not like a clear cut format that was repeating itself so that I could find a way to separate them manually. So what I had to do at the end was for, at least for timing to exclude and while focusing on the data that it's way more clean in the way it's organized. Mm. Um, so yeah, some, something I, I'm, that the, the, those problems that I have with the data, it's something that you can also see in that chart in which I'm showing you the average uh, page length of, of these reviews. So it's really strange for a review to have a 30 per, uh, over 30 pages. And of course, that there's a mistake because it, what it means is that there are more than one reviews pulled together and that's why it's so long. And at the same time, it's why they work on for those years. It's also so low. So. And why what happened is uh, I decided to focus you know, on the data that, that it's way more clean and that it's more comparable, that it's everything from 1984 onwards until 2022. Mm. Mm, in w working with uh, diversity, of course, it's uh, a matter of giving uh, also representation to uh, people who have been traditionally marginalized in this country. So it also involves acknowledging that at least uh, a lot of my expectations of the sort of data that I was looking for, I was not able to really acquire it. So that's something that for me, it's like managing my own expectations of what I can do. And in this slide, what I'm showing you right now, it's the seven slides, uh, the seven di dimensions that I was able to uh, datify to a large extent. I'm still just working on the final one, uh, get, getting all of the metadata about the books we're being reviewed and their uh, library of Congress classification. But other than that, it's, I have all of the data so far, so at least it's something. And for the purpose of what I want to do is, th uh, that means like cutting through different levels of this network in terms of who are the actors and then looking to their cultural objects and then looking to a sort of relations between reviewers and authors. At least it's sufficient for me to start developing a methodology that perhaps I could use for our case. So it's not all what I wanted, but it's something, I guess. Mm. Uh, also something, uh, a big boundary in this case is not, uh, not a lot of the, uh, these authors are really that well known outside of Colombia and in many cases they didn't even have any Wikipedia profile so that also made even getting the data about the places in which they were born really difficult so I just had to work a lot just using the ex existing names and also recognizing that approximating names based on gender associations, it's just a proxy and there's also a lot of room in which this may not alienate with the identities of the people involved, but it's at least some. Okay, so now to talk about the results that I obtained, which were really not what I was expecting. Uh, probably you can see that in the, uh, there's this huge uh, gender disparity that persists across the, across the years. I, and for me, at least, they were rather discouraging. The percentage of women reviewers generally fluctuates between 20 and 30 percent. And the gender gap among reviewers is really strong and persistent. And similar results were obtained uh, when I looked to the authors of the books being reviewed. Um, contrary to my expectations, there has not been any trend of increased diversity in terms of gender over time. So that, in a way, for me, it was a huge contrast because it's still, of course, my expectations perhaps were biased by my uh, ideas. So also, I, as I have been working with different facets of, of what this organization is doing, there are other programs, there are different exhibitions in which they have been focusing more in gender. But uh, if you see at least the reviews, it's not something that is being reflected and it's something that there has not been any change. So perhaps that's also something that can be useful for this organization. And, uh, for the broader cultural sector so that we question what we're really doing if we're not going anywhere in terms of diversity of, of this. And uh, the, the second slide with the preliminary results that I have, uh, it's about the, public, the place in which the books were published. So it's largely Bogota, more than 60%. Uh, in this case, uh, something that is interesting, uh, at least for me, was that while in the previous slide uh, I was, it was really easy to see year by year that there was not any change happening, 
because it was just a ratio between two numbers. Here, uh, there are so many cities, and yeah, of course, many of these cities just appear once or a few times. Uh, what I ended up doing was using this uh, Shannon Diversity Index, which is widely used in uh, biodiversity studies to compare the, the, in, in a specific system, which is the balance between the different classes or categories or species present. And in this case, it's the way in which I can make, try to make sense of what, was being, what has been happening with, in terms of the basis of the uh, books being published. So something that happens here is, of course, uh, the publishing sector in Colombia, it's widely centralized in the, in, in the capital. And in addition to that, uh, well, in addition to that, something that also happens uh, in terms of why we're not seeing like also cities from other countries is that the focus of this magazine has been on Colombian cultural heritage. And even though saying those two caveats, uh, or, uh, I still see it as a huge problem, or at least the thing that worries me the most as uh, someone interested in cultural management, is to see that the trend, especially in the, late, in the latest years, has been to even lower diversity in terms of the places of publication of the books, and which is perhaps one of the main takeaways of the work that I have been doing, is that at least uh, when you start to see changes over time, you could, even if the starting point is not ideal, as long as there's some progress, you could, you could feel that there's something being done about it. But what was discouraging for me also in terms of this other dimension was that it doesn't, it could, it sometimes, it's not even that there's not even a linear progress, but it sometimes it can even be getting worse in the latest years. So that's part of my experience so far with this. Mm, just to get back to, to get back to some of the final remarks or the things that you may take from, from this, uh, from what I have been doing, it's this interest in trying to contrast what organizations are saying that they're doing with what they are actually offering. Uh, of course, in this case, uh, um, perhaps they have been focused more on doing other sort of products. Perhaps they have not been focused so much on reconstructing the sort of the system that they use to assign all of these reviews. So that's one of the main takeaways for me. Uh, I, I was trying to identify trends for increased diversity over time, but I have not any, any evidence for that uh, based on my research so far. And uh, yeah, especially regarding uh, gender uh, disparities, there's, that's an issue that for uh, that there, there's like right now. <coughs> um, this result is not surprising in itself for a lot of uh, Colombian feminists who have been criticizing the lack of uh, gender parity in the, in the in the sector for a long, long time. So, of course, that was not surprising when, 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 when I see it from that perspective, but still the, the lack of progress is something that uh, I believe by working on that on my research, perhaps there's a way that we can start to address in a way. So that's, those are my hopes. <laughs> Thank you so much. And I would like to, I would really appreciate any sort of feedback that you may give. So thanks so much. <laughs>